Hi, I'm Don Mitchell. Welcome back to 2000% Nation, the book that encourages you and demonstrates ways that you can help your nation become at least 20 times more fruitful for expanding and improving God's kingdom. Today we'll be talking about what churches should concentrate on, the subject of Chapter 3. Obviously, churches have a huge role to play in any expansion or improvement of God's kingdom. And I look forward to uh, your reactions to this. I hope you'll feel free to share them with me. Let me begin by quoting from uh, the last words of Jesus uh, just before uh, he was propelled into heaven as he ascended. This is from Acts chapter 1, verse 8 in the New King James Version. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my should be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Next, let's look at uh, Acts uh, chapter 2, verses 40 through 43. In terms of what happened after the um, Holy Spirit had come, and with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them, and they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Finally, let's uh, look at uh, another quote now from First uh, Peter uh, chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. For the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers, and above all, Things. Have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Christ Jesus to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Many churches will need to increase the breadth of what they do and improve performance in some of what they do now for a 2,000% nation to be established. Before describing what churches should concentrate on and explaining what I mean by the prior sentence, we should always remember that Christ leads the church. Let me also notice that human leadership is unusually important for a church to be able to concentrate in the most fruitful ways. In setting their agendas, churches are led in a variety of ways beyond what the Bible and the Holy Spirit direct, some by higher human authorities, some by pastors and ministers, and uh, some by congregations or parts of it. Uh, while I'm sure that the Bible and the Holy Spirit are perfect sources of godly wisdom, dealing with humans are bound to be misunderstandings and some errors. God knows that and forgives. His grace in this regard should not draw us away from seeking his wisdom so that we can do better. In sharing my observations in this chapter, I pray that I have been faithful and accurate in expressing God's will. In addition, I am in no way judging what any churches or their leaders are doing now. Leaders should simply pray about this chapter's information to receive guidance from the Bible and the Holy Spirit. should study what the Bible has to say on the subject and should take action according to that divine guidance. Many Christians would agree the church should provide at least for the following needs. First, treat all with love. It's commanded by Jesus in the Bible. Some may not receive love from other people. Second, teach the young and adults who lack knowledge about the Bible's contents, especially concerning what his word says about receiving the free gift of salvation. Third, encourage, uh, encourage of age congregants and visitors to repent their sins, believe in the risen Savior, and follow Jesus as Lord so they will obtain the free gift of salvation. Fourth, remind congregants invite and to bring family, friends, neighbors, and co-workers to church services and activities. Fifth, tend to the spiritual needs of the congregation of visitors. Sixth, approve of living in ways commanded by the Bible. Seventh, rebuke saved people who are stuck in some repeated sins. Eighth, provide opportunities for fellowship with saved people. Ninth, serve the physical needs of the congregation as poorest and most vulnerable neighbors. Uh, and finally, support foreign missions through prayer, working visits, and gifts of need items and funds. If a church limits its official activities to this list, however, there's a problem. Most people in the congregation won't be as fruitful to the Lord as they could be. Let me begin by explaining why I say this by quoting Jesus as he commanded, uh, excuse me, commented on what the parable of the sower means 
as described in Mark chapter 4, verses 14 through 20. The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. After a tribulation and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among the thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Well, Jesus clearly told us that many people who learn about the Bible and salvation aren't going to make good use of this knowledge. He also tells us that some Christians can be exponentially fruitful for him in sharing the good news. Building on his observation, it seems that churches have substantial opportunities to help people learn the gospel, become saved, fulfill their godly callings, and help produce by the efforts exponential increases in his influence. Such potential for extraordinary fruitfulness lies within us all. Churches have marvelous opportunities to focus on increasing fruitfulness. I addressed the subject in detail for individuals in the 2000% Living Book. Uh, we also look at these points in Chapter 15 of the 2000% Nation. Let me brief, uh, briefly summarize uh, these prescriptions for individual Christians. Lesson 1. Accept salvation by repenting of your sins, believing Jesus is God's Son and in his resurrection from the dead, and giving your life to Jesus Christ to do his will not yours, or rededicate your life to him if you've accepted salvation but have not been walking with him. Start every day by praising and thanking the Lord, repenting any sins you have committed, praying for what is righteous that you want done in the name of Jesus, and studying the Bible. Attend church whenever possible. Make a weekly written commitment of added ways to follow his direction, and continually witness to others about your faith, seeking to help lead at least 20 people to whom you've been speaking to choose to accept salvation. Next, cleanse your mind of distractions, accusations, worries, fears, and annoyances through twice daily meditation. Third, uh, speak, excuse me, pick better life objectives through prayer and consultation with family and friends. Fourth, increase by at least a factor of 20 time you spend on your most important goals for serving the Lord. Fifth, expand your ability to read, to comprehend, and to remember by at least 20 times. Sixth, select reading materials that will help you identify and understand Future best practices, the best ways anyone in the world will do that or any similar activity using natural means in the next five years. And the ideal best practices, the best ways anyone can ever hope to do that or any similar activity by using technology will be available in the next five years in those areas where you want to gain godly breakthrough results. Seventh, learn how to identify stalls, bad thinking habits, to eliminate and replace stalls with good thinking habits and design and implement 2,000% solutions Ways to accomplish things at least 20 times more with the same or less time, money, and effort to serve others in God's behalf by producing your first one. Eight, teach someone else how to identify eliminate stalls and design and implement 2,000 percent solutions that are tuned to the Holy Spirit. Nine, apply the 2,000 percent solution process each year to one additional important activity that the Holy Spirit leads you to improve. And ten, repeat the 2,000 percent solution process annually to enhance benefits from solutions you develop by at least another 20 times. 11. Link together at least seven complementary 2,000 best solutions, ones that multiply the benefits of one another to create multiplied exponential godly results. 12. Increase the benefits of what you do by 20 times to assist some of those who cannot help you. 13. Approach others with fresh interest, warm gratitude, and a deep desire to draw 20 times closer to them. 14. Examine your conduct. We're acting to see if it will be pleasing to God. So let me, uh, next we'll be looking at, and then the next video, at ways to connect these 14 lessons to what churches can do to increase their fruitfulness and enhancing actions by congregants. I focus first on helping to lead unsafe people to gain salvation. This is a subject that, with my wonderful co authors, is described by witnessing made easy and in ways you can witness. The books that record the best ways to improve witnessing based on the global contest the Holy Spirit directed me to sponsor. I also elaborate how to best to teach churches how to be more effective in nurturing these witnessing-related activities 
in chapter 1 of Help Wanted. But until we return to hear the rest of this chapter, I hope that you'll be well, and may God bless you, your family, and all you do in the name of Jesus. Goodbye for now. Take care.